Okay, I told you the other day that Citadel kind of preventing the clients from removing the money from their funds was not the very first time they did that. They did that back in 2008 and they also did that, you know, a, a couple of times in between now and then. But there is something I want to share with you because um, there, there's barely a coincidence happening in the market. Ce que tu vois ce que je veux dire en fait. Stella refuses to give investors their remaining cash back. That was in December 2008. Now, December 2020, 21, or 2021, should I say? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Millennium, Citadel, winning the war to keep client cash longer. <sighs> Do you see what I see here, pop, uh, people? Est-ce que vous voyez ce que je vois ici, les gars? Est-ce que vous voyez ce que je vois ici, les amis? Do you see what I see here? Two things. First of all, whenever big hedge funds like this, because Millennium is even bigger in terms of money being actually invested than Citadel. And the fact that all across the board, big hedge funds are now moving away and moving you know, towards this direction as to re prevent investors from getting the money out. Two main reasons behind it. First of all, they are seeing some headway coming their way that will actually prevent them from making big returns or it's going to cause clients to rush and take the money out. Like a crisis, for example. Maybe? I don't know. You tell me. Now, the other reason might be that um, they're losing money. They're losing money because the performance is not as good as it's supposed to be. I mean, damn it, you're a hedge funds. People like Oprah, people like, you know, the billionaires out there here in US and internationally, they don't come to hedge funds to have 10% per year. If they were looking for 10% per year, they will put their money into an S&P 500 index fund like everybody else. They are looking to double the money. They're looking to triple the money. They're looking to quadruple to 10x, 20x, 50x their money. That's why it was so easy for Citadel to short sell AMC in 2020. But now the history has changed and they are kind of carrying heavy bags. <laughs> oh, en d'autres termes, ça n'a pas marché comme ça avait dû marcher, les amis. So um, they're trying to, to make things look good. But in reality, it's worse than it is. But one thing we need to take away from this, regardless of AMC or anything else, is that this might be a signal. This might be an indicator of something not that good coming our way. I don't know. Maybe it's the way the market will react when, you know, interest rates and inflation and if the Fed trying to fight inflation starts, you know, really happening and taking place or another black swan event. I don't know. Um, I don't have a you know a magic crystal ball. Je suis pas charlatan, moi. Je suis pas je suis pas devin pour voir ce qui se passe dans le futur. So nobody can say, nobody can tell. But at least um, it gives a, another level of confidence, especially when you want to tie this to that credit analyst, you know, Dr. Marco, the German guy, predicting that hey, buy AMC and GameStop before. Evergrande defaults because if and when they do, because that sounds like it's inevitable, when they do, these two are the only stocks the guy is willing to hold. So um, that is going to make us who already bought and are holding EMC for the last 10 months freaking rich. <laughs> I don't know about you, but um, I'm kind of scared for my other stocks. I don't know what to do. Any advice, please welcome in the comment section.